What's going on, everybody? Hope everyone's having a good day or a good night. And this is a video I've been wanting to do for a while now. And I kind of held it off, at least from starting to do this, once I started making a lot of videos on YouTube, because I wanted to try my best to formulate everything. And I don't want to say make it as professional as possible, but try my best not to sound like I'm a rambling idiot which I know may still happen knowing my luck, but I've been wanting to make this for a while. And before I start, and you probably already know by the title of the video, this is a video that is going to be me talking about something that I really, really, really like, and that is professional wrestling. And this is going to be about why I think people should at least respect professional wrestling. So if you're not a fan of wrestling then you're probably not going to want to watch this. But, if you still watch this, I'm, I would be grateful if you did, because maybe it would at least change your perception of professional wrestling. Not, not, not to say that you have to be a fan of it, but I think you should at least respect it. But if you don't want to watch this, it's perfectly fine as well. So, I've been a fan of wrestling since I was a kid. Young kid, I saw, I, and I remember my very first match too. The very first match I ever saw. I think I might have seen it in 91 or 92. It was on the Hulkamania Coliseum video, Hulkamania Classics Coliseum videotape. And it was Hulk Hogan versus The Genius. That was the very first match I ever saw. And I remember watching it, and it was really different from other stuff from other sports that I've seen as a kid and things like that and while I did enjoy it I didn't really get hooked into wrestling back then I would watch it here and there I my brother would have the video games on the, the Super Nintendo and I would play them even though I don't think they were the best games, even, even by back then standards, but I would watch it here and then. I wasn't, like, addicted to it. Then, in 1994, a little feud known as Bret Hart versus Owen Hart happened. And as soon as that feud happened, I became hooked. I became absolutely hooked. Because the feud reminded me a lot of my real life, of basically me and my brother, me being in the shadow of my brother, kind of like how Owen Hart was in the storyline. And not to mention, the looks were similar too. Owen Hart had blonde hair back then. My hair was more, a little bit more blonde back then. And my brother had dark hair, kind of like Bret Hart. So it was almost like seeing me versus him. And it, it just instantly hooked me. And from that point on, I was instantly hooked. Although, I would say, looking back, 95 was a pretty, pretty bad year for professional wrestling, not just WWE. But, that, but as a kid, you didn't really look at that stuff. You just looked at what it was. You lived in the now. Looking back at it, you, you're probably thinking to yourself, the hell did I enjoy that? <laughs> but I still love that feud, the Bright Hard vs. Owen Hart feud. And um, from that point on, I was hooked. And then there were other brother feuds that really hooked me on. Like in 98, it was actually started in late 97, but really picked up in 98 was The Undertaker versus Kane. And I was a big fan of Kane, and my brother was probably the biggest Undertaker fan you can think of. I still like Undertaker, but it was like that brother versus brother thing. And it, stuff like that really related to me. But I'm kind of going off topic there. I just wanted to explain how I first really, really loved professional wrestling. But see, the thing is, today, well, not really just today, but maybe I would say the last, since 2000, around time, I don't know, I would say, if you talk to somebody, or at least when I did, whether it's work environments or just going out and just talking with people, Yes, I believe it or not, some of you who do know me, I do do that occasionally, so it might be surprising, but 
eh, it is what it is. And you just talk, and they would ask you, what do you like? And I would say I lo love professional wrestling. It's my favorite sport. And then they would eat. How can you like something that is fake? How can, how can you like that? And that's the main thing that I see people talk about when they are people who don't like wrestling. Is that it's fake. Or should I say fake? Because in my opinion, fake is not the right word. In my opinion, the right word is scripted. It is scripted entertainment mixed in with sporting elements. Hence the term sports entertainment. Yes, with the exception of a few matches, professional wrestling has scripted outcomes. But what a lot of people don't understand is that how to get to those outcomes is up to the wrestlers and their ability to connect with the crowd and map out a match that will hopefully get people interested in it. Which, I, I, does it sound easy? To me it doesn't. <laughs> It really isn't. It, it's a very, very, very innate skill to have. And that's the thing that always really ticked me off. Well, not really completely ticked me off, but it really bugged me. It's like, is that really why you don't like professional wrestling? Is, is that it's fake? Okay, then. Well, do you like television shows? They're not real. Do you like movies? They're not real either. But yet, funny thing is, I don't see people saying, oh, I'm just using this as an example. Bruce Willis in Die Hard 4 did not jump off that helicopter on that freeway and roll down the wing and then rolled, I think he rolled on the movie. That didn't happen. It was all green screen and special effects. I don't remember seeing people going, you know, that was f this is fake. I'm not watching this stuff. So let me ask you guys. Why is it not a big deal for movies and television shows? But it's such this sacrilegious sin for prof excuse me, for professional wrestling to be scripted. And notice I said fake with the movies and television shows, but I'm saying scripted for wrestling. Because movies and television shows are completely, I, I guess scripted could be the right word for them too, but the fighting scenes in movies and television shows, they're all planned out from move to move, all done with special effects in a lot of cases. Professional wrestling, on the other hand, doesn't have of being in a movie studio, or being in a controlled environment where you can manipulate that stuff. They're in front of a live crowd with many HD cameras pointed at them, and they got to make the look, match look as real. And sometimes it leads to stiff shots and injuries. You know, I would think if wrestling was fake, how come these people were getting injured? How can people occasionally get split open? Why is that? I mean, I would think if it was fake, none of that stuff would happen. But yet, it seems to happen. And, and it, it, that comment would almost always be followed up with, you should watch Mixed Martial Arts or the UFC. And to denigrate Mixed martial arts or the UFC. Arts. I don't hate it. I just, for, for one reason or another, I just can't get into it for some reason. I really don't know why. I mean, once again, not that I've had anybody really try to get me into it. I, I mean, I've tried myself to get into it, and I just, it, it's fun for me to watch for a little bit, but. I'm not a hardcore for every pay-per-view every month and look up fights online and study people and their backgrounds and stuff. I, I, 
I'm not not into that. But then again, once again, I never really had anybody to try to get me into it. And I'm not trying to always have that comment of wrestling being fake followed up by you should watch Mr. Martial Arts. But once again, and then why? Why can't you enjoy professional wrestling the same way? I mean, my little brother was the same, the exact same way. He, my little brother is one of the biggest sports fanatics you'll ever see. And he has been for a very, very long time. I've seen him get into conversations with people 30, 40 years older than him about sports for hours. And it was just crazy. But he had that same perception about professional wrestling. Until I started explaining stuff like this to him. And he started watching it with me and my dad. My dad likes wrestling. He's not a hardcore fan, but whenever I'm up there, he watches it. And he is slowly over time, he started actually liking it. He's not a fan of it now. Like, he doesn't watch it every week. I don't think he's watched one for a long time. But at least he doesn't go into it hating it like he used to. Or go in looking at it as, oh, this is fake. I immediately hate it. And, 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 and to me, that's a problem. And it also leads into my other point about why I'm making this video, is that professional wrestling and professional wrestlers don't even get the same level of respect of other athletes, of other sports. And to me, I don't see how wrestling, to be perfectly honest, is different in other sports. I mean, when people call, oh, it's not a real sport. To me, and I don't have an exact definition in my head or right in front of me, but to me, a sport is an athletic contest that involves competition from either teams or people. And to me, that's what a sport is. That's what basically professional wrestling is. Because and you probably, and I'm not going to fault anyone for not thinking this way because you have to be really into professional wrestling to understand the terminology and behind the scenes stuff and what these wrestlers have gone through. A lot of them are in competition with one another. Occasionally, you have to have the best matches. Now, yes, there are politics involved in professional wrestling. There's a ton of politics, too. So, I don't really see how that's any different. But, they're in competition. Little clicks backstage of people protecting their spots. There were up-and-coming wrestlers trying to have the best matches to get noticed. I mean, I remember in the early 90s WCW when they were going through all this type of management, one of the potential, or not potential, but he became owner. He was only owner for like three months. He developed a system where if you had the best match on the card, whether it's a televised card, house show card, which is not a televised event for people who don't know what a house show is, or a pay-per-view card, if you have the best match, and I'm guessing he did it based on reaction maybe, you got a bonus. A bonus in your check. And keep in mind, back then, people did not have guaranteed pay. Like a lot of athletes do today. Even some in the WWE. They didn't have guaranteed pay. They were paid based on attendance and also merchandising. So with that system in place, they were instantly motivated to have the best match. And when a wrestler is motivated to have the best match, you can tell. And that led to some good matches. But see, at the same time, they were in competition with one another to try to have the best match. Try to outdo the other one. <coughs> Excuse me. So, honestly, in a way, I don't see that as being any different from arts. It, it, it might not be exactly the same, but it's indirectly the same meaning. 
Not to mention, it's also an athletic contest because you have to be a top-notch athlete to be a professional wrestler. And I, I know that might be hard to believe seeing some wrestlers over examples. They've done, they've had professional wrestling matches. And one of the biggest examples is um, Lawrence Taylor. He was in the main event of WrestleMania 11 in 1995. Which, by the way, was the worst WrestleMania of all time, but that's another story. <laughs> he was in the main event against a guy named Bam Bam Bigelow. And at that point, Lawrence Taylor trained for three months just for this one match. And the match, I don't even think, went over ten minutes. I could be wrong. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think it, if it did go over 10 minutes, or maybe 12. I haven't seen the match in a while. He went backstage after. And he asked Shawn Michaels, how often do you guys do this a year? And at that point, they did it 300 plus days a year. And Lawrence Taylor went, oh my god, I cannot see myself doing this more than once a week. That was one of the most physically exhausting things I've ever had to do. And keep it 12 minutes. There have been a lot of professional wrestling matches that have gone up to 60 minutes, sometimes even over I mean, there's a guy in the WWE now named Daniel Bryan. He just recently did an interview. He had a match that went up to 75 minutes. That is insane. That is insane. So for an athlete like Lawrence Taylor to say that, that should show you the level of training and respect that these wrestlers deserve, in my opinion. And that leads to from other sports that have done the same thing and have said similar things. Now see, going back to an earlier thing I said, I would think if this was fake, it was all acting and pretend, wouldn't it be easy then? Obviously it's not, or else everybody would be doing it. There have been countless stories of people trying to get into wrestling and they just can't because they lack the skills. And not that, also, there was also heart and determination to do it as well. But then again, once again, I would think if it was so easy like people have said it is and so fake, then I would think everyone would be able to do it. Case though. So I just think that these people need to be respected. These people need to have the utmost respect that other athletes from other sports get. And I'm not saying you have to be a fan of professional wrestling. I'm not a fan of golf. But I respect the people who play it at a professional level. I'm not a fan of tennis, but I respect the people who play it. You don't have to like to be a fan of something in order to at least respect it, either a profession or the people in it. Now, now I know that there have been some bad stories about professional wrestling. There's been steroids. Negative attention. I don't understand. It's the same thing happens in other sports. There's been steroid scandals. There have been sex scandals and all this stuff. But there's never been a dark cloud over other sports like there has been for professional wrestling. Whenever something goes wrong with professional wrestling, it seems like the media immediately leaps onto it. And honestly, that that really irritates me, considering that. Once again, the same thing happens in other sports, and it doesn't even get half the negative attention that professional wrestling gets. And another thing I don't like is wrestlers, are, and in some cases wrestling fans, are looked down upon by other people who were huge fans of other sports. Like, I remember in 2005, a wrestler named Eddie Guerrero passed away in November 2005. 
I never met the guy. One time in my life, I've never met the guy. I've seen him live a few times, but I've been watching him for years. And I'm, I'm not ashamed to admit it. I cried for a whole week. I was that upset. A guy that I've never met before affected me that much. I was that upset. But then shortly after that happened, a guy named Callan Calvert, who was a sports commentator, immediately trashed Eddie Guerrero's memory and denigrated Eddie, professional wrestling, and even professional wrestling fans. Even going, going as far as to call them booger eaters. I'm not making that up. That is exactly what he called them. Because wrestling fans were passionate enough about what happened and called him on it, and all he could do was retort with that. I don't even think there's children that would say that. And you don't have to believe me. I mean, I don't have a, a source with me at the moment. If I then I'm going to go on later and look for it. If I find it, I'll put it in the description of this video, but that's exactly what he said. And to me, once again, it goes back to the point that for some odd reason, professional wrestling is not respected. And I honestly don't understand why. I really don't. I, I want someone to explain it to me. I really do. And I don't want to hear, oh, it's fake, or, oh, they pretend to be real. Well, first off, they, Vince McMahon, in 1989, basically admitted that it was scripting. Uh, maybe a lot of people don't know this, but that's exactly what happened. He outed, basically, the business. And there are a lot of old-time wrestling promoters and old-time people in the wrestling business back then that were upset about that. And the, and the reason he did it was because, believe it or not, back then, professional wrestling were the state athletic commission. Which means whenever WWE traveled to other states, they had to fall under the state athletic commissions. And... Vince did not want to deal with them because they tried to alter his product in certain ways, and he didn't want to deal with them, so he basically outed the wrestling business. They're not pretending to be real. It, to me, it's no different than any movie, any television show. But yet, once again, none of them get even close to the negative attention that professional wrestling gets. And, once again, I don't get it. I, I really, really don't get it. And, and it's not just that I think these wrestlers should be respected for their ability, but for what they do outside the ring, too, and the lengths that they go to entertain people. And it's not just in this country. WWE travels all over the world. All over the world. I mean, I would imagine just traveling around the United States, this country, would be hard enough. But no, they travel the world, and I'll give you a perfect example. Just two weeks ago, they traveled from, I forgot where they were in the United States, but they traveled from, there, from here to Australia. Now, I don't know if anyone's been on a flight to Australia, but it's a very, very long flight. It really is. I've never been in one, but my uncle lives in Australia, and it took him, I think it's like a 15, 16 hour flight. I don't know if you can imagine being on a plane for 15, 16 hours. I was on a plane one time for, I think, or eight to nine hours, and I was going completely insane. So I can't imagine being on a plane for that long. So imagine that they have to be on planes for that long. Running media. in other countries, doing interviews, television spots. But keep in mind, they also got to get to the arena to do interviews, go over matches. They also have to have time to train. They have to go in the gym and train. So basically, listen to this, you can imagine they don't really have a lot of time to themselves. They really don't. 
they don't have a lot of time to themselves. They want to do in their leisure time, and they don't have a lot of privacy either because of them being known on w excuse me, WWE television. So yeah, for, for I, would, I would say about maybe close to a week. Then they left and flew, and I think this is how it works. Someone, anyone who is watching this and is a big time wrestling fan, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but they immediately went from Australia to South Africa. And they had one other team of wrestlers from the United States going to South Africa. Both teams met up in South Africa. Then they had a bunch of shows there. Then they went to China. And they just, just last night, last night's Monday Night Raw, they came from China. So they're just now, after about two weeks, getting back to the United States. Where they have no time to rest, because they got to immediately do shows during the week. I mean, I think, I think the old adage is that, unless you walk a mile in my boots, you will never understand. And to me, it fits perfectly for that, for that scenario. For people who think that, who look down upon professional wrestling, try and walk a mile in their shoes. It's not as easy as it seems to. I, I mean, sure, it might be fun to travel around the world and be famous, entertained. It might sound easy, but it really isn't. It really isn't. And not only that, unlike a lot of other sports, professional wrestling does not have an off-season. It does not have an off season. They are all year round, unlike other sports who take three to four, maybe five months off. And not only that, there are wrestlers who get sent down to the developmental system that WWE has, and sometimes they're down there for years. So it's not, it takes a while to get up to the level that you see WWE wrestlers. Well, I mean, Daniel Bryan, a wrestler in the WWE, and CM Punk, another wrestler, it's a perfect example. They spent years on the independent circuit before getting a chance with the WWE. And then it took them years to get to the level they are today. In my opinion, stuff like that should be respected. When these guys go out there to entertain the fans, put their bodies on the line to entertain you. And unfortunately, I don't see that respect. And I would like to see that respect. And once again, I'm not trying to say that you have to like it. You don't have to watch it every week. You don't have to watch it at all. I just think people should at least respect it. Because these guys do a lot more than you think. They really do. Shame when people don't respect them. Or professional wrestling in general. And, and another thing is a lot of people professional wrestling as a kid. Not not everybody, but there are quite a bit of them. It hasn't really changed much. Outside of a few inside changes, the actual aspect of professional wrestling has not really changed. Professional wrestling is still there. So not one, nothing's really, really changed. I mean, yeah, the problem up today is PG. Last time it was popular. It hasn't really changed much. The storylines are kind of different, but once again, you can you can say, oh well, I'm not as into the characters today or into the storylines today. That is perfectly okay. 
but I would hope that you at least respect it. You would at least respect it. So, and it's like, how was I going to say? I just lost my train of thought for a second. What was I going to say? Oh, this is embarrassing. <laughs> this is really embarrassing. But, perfectly fine with that. I mean, because I'll be the first to admit, I, I really liked the Attitude Era of the late 90s. I did. I really did. Stone Cold Steve Austin is my favorite wrestler of all time. But see, I look and look back at the Attitude Era and go, okay, there were some things they did right, but there were also some things they did wrong. To me, today is no different. There are some things that they do today that are great, and there are some things they do today that are wrong. But the bottom line I'm trying to say is I don't see it being that much different today. And if you want to explain to me why you think it's so much different today, you are welcome. All comments on this, I do. Whether it's criticism or anything, I just welcome all comments because I want to get to the bottom of this because I just really don't get why people don't respect it. I'll say that it's not as popular today as it was in the late 90s and even the early 90s because those were the two times when, well, I guess the late 80s too, when professional wrestling was mainstream and popular. Well, if WWE wasn't mainstream and popular today, how are they able to fill up these big dome stadiums for WrestleMania every year? How come they're able to make more money today than they've made ever in their existence? Now, I know a good everything today is more expensive, but the actual attendance numbers for a lot of events is exactly the same. 80, 90,000 people still fill up these dome stadiums for WrestleMania. I would think if it, wrestling wasn't mainstream and popular today, that's quite a bit of people. It really is. Maybe it might not be as mainstream and as fun to you anymore. But see, that's that's to you. That, that's not to public perception and what is actually going on out there. And I'm not saying this as a fan of professional wrestling. I'm saying this. People watch the shows every week. They get interview spots on other shows like WWE's doing. And they're doing make a wish stuff. And I think I've gone on long enough, and um, once again, I appreciate anybody who watches this whole video, and um, please let me know what you think, and once again, I, I will welcome all comments and this topic. So, hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, I will see you all next time. Have a good one.